Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Veeam on in New Orleans, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with my co-host for the week, Stu Miniman. We're going to talk cloud service providers. Cloud is obviously a very hot topic this week at Veeam on. Matt Chesterson is here, he's the CEO of Offsite DataSync, and he's joined by William Bell, who's the Vice President of Product Development for Cloud and Enterprise Services at PhoenixNap. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks. So let's start, what's, what's happening at Veeamon? You heard what I said about you know, cloud seems to be a major theme here. What are you guys seeing this week? Uh, we're seeing the same thing. So uh, today is officially cloud day at Veeamon, <laughs> and uh, some great announcements that are going on. So um, new product uh, announcements with V10, so we're excited about that. William, anything you'd add to yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the general session this morning covered so much around cloud and what that's going to mean to the end user at Veeam, right? And how the ecosystem is being built and working both with the hyperscalers and guys like us. So, so much talk in the industry about the big, really the big three, um, maybe you throw a China cloud in there, sure. or a Japan cloud in there. Mm -hmm. How is it that folks like you all can differentiate from the likes of AWS and Azure and, and Google. Um, maybe you could start, Bill, yeah, and sure. share Yeah, sure, yeah, service. I think that's really the key, is that customers need a help. You mean I can talk to you? You can talk to me. <laughs> we can actually help you achieve an outcome that you're looking for with your business. That's not something that you're going to get from a hyperscaler. Period. Yeah, you don't have a little device I can put in my house that I talk to instead? No, 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 no devices, no books, <laughs> no, uh, no operating systems to install, just help. So your value prop is really high touch. High touch. Right. High touch, for us, it's high touch global, right? So we can help you do the same things that you're trying to accomplish anywhere in the world, talking to the same people, right? And that's our kind of commitment. Okay, and, and yet you've also got infrastructure behind that. We do. Right? So why wouldn't you, for example, why could, would, a, could a viable strategy be say, hey, I'll put that high touch in front of AWS or Azure. Sure. Why not? Well, for us, it's, it really comes down to margins, right? At the end of the day, is that we derive margin from infrastructure just the same way we do from the service angle of that, right? And so, um, if it's only service and there's no margin on the infrastructure, it's a, it's, a, it's a tougher business to scale, right? We also can capture markets that are uncapturable, right? This isn't a cloud business for us. Right, we're, we're data center owner operators, we're you know, doing things that customers need that are not cloud centric. Mm -hmm. How about you guys, Matt? Now, a little different story here, you guys are more specialists, yeah, right? Yeah, a little bit different. So service is always important. Um, we've taken the approach with the public clouds of um, kind of going with the tide. So layering uh, products and services that um, go with that. Um, example, um, today or yesterday I think it was announced with the um, scale-out backup repositories um, being integrated with um, storage uh, like Glacier. Um, I'm sure there's a product play in there for a service provider like us so that we can offer that as a service too. So kind of taking that momentum and working with it, so integrating with what's already going on. It's going to be a tough um, tide to fight if we don't kind of direct it in the way we want. So we're kind of taking that and going in the direction of um, how can we use it and how can we benefit from mm -hmm. it. Yeah, Matt, can, can you build on that Veeam as, as a partner? The, we, I think it was Peter McKay told us 30% of their business is to the you know thousands and thousands of service providers they have. Yeah. You know, where do you you know find opportunity, yeah. products, growth uh, when it comes to Veeam? Yeah, good question, Stu. Um, what Veeam's doing, um, they make it very easy for us as partners um, in the cloud, of course, um, so that when something's delivered, they make it cloud available as well. So, um, as you can see, users of Veeam can direct their backups and archives to. Um, the cloud, uh, private, public, but um, they've also made that available and are going to make that available for us. So um, they're a great partner. They always think about uh, cloud and cloud first, so they don't just develop a product that can be used um, in and around service providers, but that we can take and uh, capitalize from it as well. So, yeah. and William, what I want to add on there, you, you're also a VMware partner, and, and yeah. maybe talk to what it's like being a VMware and Veeam, and do, do you go beyond the VMware piece too with Veeam, or? Yeah, so I mean, in Veeam's ecosystem, it's very, v VMware and Microsoft are very important to both of them, right? And because of where Veeam started, Hyper-V is a large part of their business and growing still very rapidly part of their business, right? And so we are forced to address both sides of that. When we go to build our own infrastructure, when we're going to offer our own services, we've made a commitment to VMware uh, today, 
right? And we're, we're building services around that ecosystem, including the stuff that's happening with Veeam. But what we, let me talk about Veeam as a partner, right? Veeam has been singularly the best manufacturer partner that we've worked with up until this point. Maybe it mean, doesn't mean that uh, somebody else, maybe not tomorrow, but at least up until this point, they've helped both of our businesses really grow. I couldn't agree more. And, and grow, and grow in, in branding, and grow in product diversity, and grow all over the place. Explain that yeah. more. Like, is what it are they simplicity? Doing? Is it pricing? Is it you know, their, community hug? It's their hug? dedication it, to us yeah. as a partner. Yeah. So you hear of partner relationships in the community. Um, Veeam has taken it to a new level. They're truly a partner with us. Um, they care about how our business is doing, and how they can develop us, and how they can um, find out what, uh, what we don't have experience with, and then help us. So design right. a program, or introduce us to the right folks, or make the right alliance relationships. So they're, they genuinely look at it. So are they a channel for you or are you a channel for them? Both. Yeah, sometimes you don't know. The, the lines are uh, not exactly clear and that's good. That's yeah, good I think that th those unclear lines mean you know, an increase in, in all kinds of things for our, both of our companies mutually, right? We're here, we started together in this Veeam ecosystem you know, three and a half years ago, I guess now, and you know, as the first five service providers that were teamed up with Veeam, and you know we're also both standing here with you know gigantic platinum sponsorships at their show because it's become that important to us and our business. And you guys, you, I mm -hmm. mean, you sell to your customers are doing everything. They, they got one of everything in their floor. They they're I'm sure diverse. You've seen a bunch of folks on stage this week. We saw you know Microsoft today, yeah. Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We saw Cisco yesterday. Yep. Uh, what kind of relationships do you have with the big whales? So um, we align really well with Cisco. In mm -hmm. fact, that's uh, what we power our networks with and um, we use their Cisco UCS series um, for everything we power in our data centers too. So it's great to see them here and interact um, with the team and uh, they're a great partner for us. And HP Nimble Storage is uh, our other clear cut top partner, right? And when we, this ecosystem, and there's a great marriage there, both on the integration side, but from a, from a Powering these Veeam powered cloud services like offsite backup and disaster recovery requires a lot of storage, right? To, to, move, to, to take that data in and hold it and replicate it and do things with it. Um, and so, you know, our partnership with HP and Nimble's large. In some of the expansion uh, that we're seeing of Veeam talked about the kind of new 10 years where they're going. Some of that is as a service. So, yeah. you know, how do, how do they talk about that dynamic of, you know, potentially being a competitor now to, you know, the 18,000 great partners that they've had? You know, I think I think a lot of it's caught up in um, in a bit of semantic problems, right? In semantics issues. Veeam is doing a lot of things that are going to enable services and as a service. The um, I I don't see a, uh, I don't see them building solutions that would compete, right? And they have a great example of what it looks like to do that with vCloud Air being such a VMware you know centric partnership. That was a headwind that they were unable to overcome, even at the size of VMware, right? Going out and building and being a service provider and building an infrastructure service, trying to take their software company and become a service provider, it doesn't work. Same for us, well, I'm not going to go start building backup software. <laughs> so, if you think about the, meta, the mega phases of, of cloud, and Stu, we've been doing this for a long time, and I think back to the early, early VM worlds that we did, we had so much discussion around cloud, and, Back in the early days, it was kind of, you know, after Amazon announced, right. you know, AWS and cloud sort of got coined, it was an experiment, it was for startups, and that was, you know, pretty clear. And then in sort of 2008, when the economy tanked, a lot of CFOs said, all right, shift CapEx to OpEx, yeah. mm -hmm. and that was sort of the next phase. And then coming out of the downturn, a lot of lines of business said, hey, we got cash, we need speed, let's, let's go, and right. started to invest, and then, after that, IT sort of embraced it, and now seems to be whatever term you want to use, cloud broker, or mm -hmm. just, but they've sort of captured the religion and they're not hanging on to <coughs> LUN provisioning right. anymore as a practice. Now, I'm wondering if that is a reflection of your world, or because you, in your case, are a specialist and you guys are, are, are more service oriented, did you ride those waves? Was it, were, was it different ways? Maybe, William, we could start with you. So our first product line was a 250,000 square foot facility in Phoenix, Arizona, right? Building a colo, a network access point. That's the, the heritage of the Phoenix NAP, right? The name. And so we were relying on CapEx, people to go in and, and buy equipment and stick it in our facility. 
everyone had already decided they didn't want to build data centers. Like right in 2010, everyone's like, you know what, $10 million to get you know, my data room up, no thanks, right? But they were committed to buying hardware and we took advantage of that and grew that business. And we started to address the OPEX side you know, in 2012, kind of moving forward. And we, at least we believe we're, we're prime positioned because at the end of the day, it's going to be both. All OPEX is not the answer, right? I truly believe that. And that's part of that hybrid story as well. Yeah. And Matt, what about you guys? I mean, you're again, being specialists in, in, in all kinds of things, DR, recovery, et cetera, did you take a different journey? Yeah, Dave, we did, and um, I heard the term even this week, um, born in the cloud. Um, I, if it makes sense, we're a cloud company that had that vision from the beginning, so we didn't build the facility, um, but uh, that's certainly what we do, is leverage uh, space power bandwidth that we um, partner with with uh, Switch and SuperNAP facilities for our data centers, and we believe that customers are and will continue to move into the Opbox model into the cloud, so both production workloads and um, DRAS uh, backup as well. Um, it's interesting to see that mix too, especially as things um, from Veeam are announced that uh, that really becomes one. So the workloads of DRAS are soon within you know, 15 minutes or 15 seconds going to become a production workload. Mm -hmm. um, right. So if uh, customers aren't necessarily moving their infrastructure to the cloud, um, it's going to happen uh, one way or the other, whether it's um, the model of they don't want to purchase hardware any longer or they've had some sort of failure or disaster, they're going to move that way. Right, yeah. Um, what, let you speak a little bit more about your customers. There, there was a great line I thought from Mark Rosinovich which said that you know the C-suite doesn't come asking for infrastructure as a service. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to figure out how to take their business to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, where are your customers in that kind of cloud strategy and you know, how are you helping them uh, you know, uh, along that journey? Yeah, we have a discussion with them. We try to understand what their business objectives are and uh, what they're trying to achieve by um, either pushing to the cloud or understanding what the cloud is. Um, and there's a, a spectrum there from, uh, as I mentioned before, backup, disaster recovery as a service, infrastructure as a service, and not all things line up to one single um, service or um, way you can put it in the cloud. So we try to understand what their business objectives are and say it's going to make the most sense to put um, some of the workload in the cloud, but some applications stay on site and you have uh, DRAS replication right. um, to get them off site. So really engaging and understanding what their uh, business needs are and getting under the hood of what they're trying to achieve. Right. Yeah, I think that at the end of the day, we, s we are focused on a hybrid future, right? We truly believe that, that customers will search for the cloud experience, the business optimization for a period of time where they're saying, you know what, I don't care, I want this outcome, go get me the outcome. At some point, it will come back. They will be like, okay, we have the outcome. How can we optimize this outcome? Are we spending the right amount of money to achieve this outcome? And the moment they do that, they will find that OpEx purely and blatantly, if you just say, I'm all in, I'm always on, I'm only OpEx, you will spend more money on that over time. If you pick and choose the things that you are incapable of doing or would cost you more to do through CapEx and staffing, then, then you can basically position both of those things to maximize value. Horses for courses. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thanks very of much. Of course, thank you guys so much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Absolutely. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from Veeam On 2017. This is theCUBE.